But we still have the founder of uh, Chineto Ozigbo Foundation and the chairman Feet and Tricks International talking about uh, Valentine Ozigbo right here with us. And he'll be speaking and giving us his own views on how the coronavirus has affected the world entirely. Good morning to you. Good morning. Yeah, it's good to have you live with us on Skype. My pleasure. Yeah, so let's talk about um, the COVID-19. It's really breaking down the whole world and businesses seem to be shutting down. I would like to have your own uh, view on how the virus is affecting the world. Um, it is such an un unimaginable um, thing going on around the world. I don't think anybody in his widest imagination could have fathomed that this kind of uh, impact would be happening negatively uh, in the world of business and in the world of sports. And I must say that what is also most um, difficult is the fact that the impact actually happens more for what I call labor intensive industries. You know, if you know, the biggest challenge we face in the world is uh, unemployment and even more in uh, countries like um, uh, Nigeria and others and continents like Africa. And uh, tourism, for instance, tourism, uh, travels and tours, um, actually the biggest employer of labor in the world. Uh, and so people, uh, research scientists have always come with those figures that uh, if you invest a dollar in these sectors, um, you find that they have more uh, employment opportunities than a typical maybe oil and gas. Yeah. And so this is the part of uh, you know, the business of the world that are most affected. And, and so tourism is zero, travels is zero. And so we're not talking about reduced impact then talking about brought to ground zero. And the difficult thing about this is, I can tell you, a lot of these businesses are not going to come back alive. So it's not a case of, oh, okay, let's just wait and when coronavirus, uh, COVID-19 pandemic is over, they're going to re re you know, resurface. Some of them are going to die permanently because if you understand how businesses are run, some of them are highly leveraged. Some of the business models we've always, I've always feared about airline business. Um, reason is just for a marginal increase in fuel price they're going to shock how much more when they are grounded and there are some costs and there are running costs that will continue whether or not they are flying and so if they've leased these airlines they've gone into fixed contracts they've borrowed money they're going to fix interest rates they're going to pay all those interest rates so how would they ever survive and this is the reason why uh, you're seeing a lot of countries coming out with palliatives to support them. And that's the only reason that they can survive. If government can actually run to the um, you know, support uh, of uh, businesses, and they have to find creative ways of doing so, because it gets to a point that even government may disappear. And, and I've said it with all sense of seriousness. Um, a lot of these countries are already overgeared, overleveraged. And so to keep piling, piling more debts, piling more debts, they get to a bankrupt situation. You can't borrow ad infinitum. And that is the situation we face. And if you actually then bring it down home here, you will see again the same thing. A lot of our businesses are going to die, not just going to suffer, they're going to die. And a lot of people are going to lose jobs. And um, we're not seeing the greater impact yet because our numbers are low. But and this is why we have to take certain drastic action right now to prevent. We know we are extremely vulnerable as a country. And so the best we can do for ourselves is to figure out how best to prevent this from escalating. Yeah. And that's why uh, I'm you know, making those videos that a couple of others have also done. And that's why I'm also urging every Nigerian to see what can be done to prevent. So it's a huge uh, negative impact on businesses and sports as well. Very true. Now let's 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 um, turn it down to um, sports. Now um, let's talk about feet and tricks, um, the freestyle football competition that we've seen for about three seasons now. Um, do you think that COVID nineteen will affect um, the, the 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 edition that, we, that was supposed to be held this year? 
Certainly. Um, uh, by now, we should be finalizing our plans, plans with all key stakeholders, with our sponsors, with our vendors, with our athletes, with our logistics. And um, because the idea, for, for those who don't understand um, freestyle football, this for me is the, the best thing that's happened to the world of football because it is that kind of football that you simply pick up a ball and juggle with every, every part of your body. And you do this in such a manner that, you know, appeals to um, human sentiments, emotion, and because there's a fusion of uh, music and dance and, and what have you. So uh, one of the things I love about freestyle football is, especially for female folks who usually will switch off uh, channel, change channels when they see uh, a premiership match going on. But when they see freestyle football, they stay. The kids stay, the adults stay, the men stay. So they watch with so much, you know, interest and commitment. And wow, 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 those are the words that come out. Because when you see these young athletes, you know, do magic with this ball. In fact, people actually just came, and they usually just uh, uh, get to a conclusion that, oh, they are using jazz, or, but it's all practice. Practice can really make uh, perfect. So it is something beautiful. And so we've done this now for 2017 edition, 2018 edition, 2019 edition, and we are planning for 2020. And the way we've always, we did last year, for instance, we had regional championships, uh, we had four, one in Lagos for Southwest, another in Wari for South South, another in Owerri for Southeast, and then we had Abuja for North. And um, so this year, we actually plan to expand to other regions that we couldn't cover. And we want to start early around May. Obviously, with all of this, with our, even our sponsors, uh, being unreachable now, so we are having to slow down, and we're going to have to um, replan. And maybe if we don't have enough time for regional ch championships, we can actually just go straight into the Nigerian championship and the African championship. Uh, last year, uh, we had about 30 countries represented, mostly from Africa, and then some other we invited to either be judges and uh, uh, sponsors or technical partners to the event. So every country is coming down to Nigeria for a championship is, is a big deal. And this year, I can promise you we're going to have a lot more. Uh, and so we may just go straight into uh, where I'm meeting with my board soon, uh, virtually, to replan this. Uh, most likely, we will shift all our events towards uh, summer of this year. By the grace of God, uh, Corona should have come and gone. The impact would have also been uh, obviously minimizing our lives. So this is the plan. We are still going to go on with the championship this year. And we're likely going to just push that towards the end of this year after summer. And that way, we actually may just go straight into the Nigerian championship and the African championship. But I must say to you, last night I got on the phone with some of my team brainstorming. We actually want to also bring up um, a virtual competition where we get the freestylers to, you know, showcase their skills and and we, you know, kind of uh, put out an excitement there. Prizes to be won. That way we entertain the world and see how we can actually connect this to the mainstream and and see how we can raise uh, more momentum for. For the eventual championship anyway so uh, we are finalizing this and uh, hopefully uh, with this period of everybody sitting at home looking at this phone and, and, and laptops we actually may because it's a safe way of doing this where you alone just nobody in your house picking up a football recording yourself uploading quality videos and looking at see how the crowd will comment and you know buy into all of this so we can actually still get something on the way to keep people entertained. And uh, once that plan is finalized, of course, uh, Plus TV will be first to know. Thank you very much for that. And it's a good plan. We're, we're hoping and uh, believing that the coronavirus will fade before then. Now, um, I would like to thank you very much for talking to us this morning. Thank you. And always make sure you sanitize your hands and wash it frequently. <laughs> of course, not just, uh, not just, uh, let me also put out a one in there, please, because uh, as I was um, distributing the sanitizers uh, through my team, we were also putting out this message. Uh, please, these are colleagues, 
uh, sanitizers are also inflammable. When you sanitize your hands, don't go near your gas cooker. Uh, people's hands have been burnt because of this. So let's uh, be very uh, precautious about this. Thank you very much for speaking with us. All right, that was um, Valentine Ozigbo right there for the founder, Chinito Ozigbo Foundation, and also the chairman of Feet and Tricks International, talking about freestyle football, having a great conversation with him right there on the show this morning.